welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Like she, um, my name is Linda. That's all we need to call Linda. I'm, you know what? I am a little um, worried about getting in the entire program in three hours. And then in the afternoon, we're going to do three hours on the principal program. Um, each one's two to three days in the workshops. So that's why uh, she mentioned that I would speed talk. I, I do have to eliminate a lot of the activities because they take long. They're very valuable, so I'm going to give you a lot of my stuff. I'm going to give you as much as I can that if you were working with, say, a principal or a teacher who needed extra in different um, areas of development, you might do the activities with them, and that's what they're meant for. Um, so I'll briefly go through the activities and show you how to use them, but we won't be able to do them today, most of them. We're going to do a few. Uh, a quick background on McCrell, in case there's a few people um, that haven't worked a lot with McCrell yet. They're in their 48th year of educational um, development um, and research and applied programs that they have um, devised. Every single person who works for McCrell, they're based out of um, Colorado and their new office is in Maui. Which oh, 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 yeah. oh, right? Right? <laughs> How much work are they getting done oh, working my. on like the 20th floor overlooking the beach in Maui? But they have not invited me there, so I'm working hard. <laughs> I'm trying to get all my brownie points in so they see if I can go there instead of Denver, which is also beautiful. Um, every single person who works through McCrell, from Tim Waters, the CEO, down to every trainer that travels across the world, we are national and international, um, is a retired educator. So I think that's an important thing, and that has really built into their 40 year, 48 years of research and development. We are the only partner with McCrell in New Jersey, formally for providing service. EIRC is the service provider. So like I said, I've been with them for the last two years. We kind of hit the ground running. You know, I left my school on the 30th, and the very next day I was sitting in a workshop learning how the McCrell system worked. So um, I was looking for that week off. Um, it's really good. I think you're going to enjoy it. I think that the teacher model, you're going to grasp and be able to go in there and work with your teachers. And the principal model, I, I'm going to tell you my favorite line out of all of the training is it's what, it's what they know and should be able to do. So it's very hands-on. It's very, um, there's no mystery to it, I guess that's what I want to say. It is exactly what we should know and be able to do as administrators and as educational leaders. So we're going to start today with the um, teacher model. So I want to explain the books real quick. So you have two books for each. This one, you have two teachers. One really is about the PowerPoint, and the other one, it, it'll follow most of the slides, which I'm going to tell you right now. You may have grabbed two of the same, some people. The books are here. Um, and the other one is more of the background. More of, you know, gives you more of the research in the beginning, um, I used to joke when we would do the three-day training, I'd call this more of the B training because I would predominantly use the other one that says participant model or manual. Um, we're going to use them. I apologize for skipping through my PowerPoint, but I'm really going to go to the parts that we're going to spend the most time on. This is the two-day workshop, so you're going to see that we're only going to go and use the uh, pieces that I think you absolutely have to have. Okay, before we get started, are we okay on the books? Yeah. Everybody? And then I also gave you, this is a copy of the PowerPoint in its entirety, so you can write on it. Um, it is the entire PowerPoint, though. So, like I said, we will be moving through some of these slides rather quickly. Okay. So I was going to, there's one thing I'd like to do before we get started. Oh, I'm going to do something. Let's go to the actual model. Does anyone have experience, first of all, with... Notice I'm going through all the policy, the premises, like what it was built on and how we got here and all of, the, all of that good stuff. You're, you would read that on your own. It is in the books. Um, all important, but I think you guys are vested enough that you, you're, you're in this, so we're not going to spend any time on that. Has anyone seen the actual evaluation system in the year? This is the year cycle, okay? So I just want to start up here before we do something for a few minutes. So first you're gonna start off with training. Obviously the teachers, the schools that you'll be in, hopefully they've been trained by the state mandate. Everyone had to go through a two day to three day training 
at the teacher level, and the principal level was um, a two-day. So we have the training and the orientation. The teachers needed that to get up to speed. You know, a lot of them, I guess it's a little different having a rubric. I actually think it's wonderful because it's laid out. It's like a roadmap. You can be as good as you want to be. You can do as much as you want to do. It's laid out in front of you. It's, for me, I love the idea of a rubric. I hope you guys do. Um, so that's the first step, and you guys are beyond that. So the second step is the teacher self-assessment. And this is meant to happen in June, which will in your schools now, because this is the training happened last year. So this June, the teachers will do their teacher self-assessment for the fall. So they'll take the actual rubric, and they have to do a self-assessment. Okay. Now, self-assessment is what they feel they have achieved for that year. Who they are for that year, not five years ago. If they were teacher of the year three years ago, that is fabulous. But we're looking at a year in the life. So that we can say, where is the growth happening right now? Where does the growth need to happen right now? So we're going to do a one-year teacher self-assessment. It is not evaluative at all. Okay, This is just the teacher's self-reflection on how they feel they are doing right now for that year in their educational career. Okay, Now that self-assessment... Hopefully, they have a good relationship with their evaluators, and it can be sent electronically. Or McCrell allows you to check off, no, I feel funny about sending it ahead of time so that you can look over how I feel about myself, and you can bring a paper version. And we'll go through a little bit of the online electronic pieces to show you those things, but it's very, it's pretty easy. Um, I understand everybody's getting iPads, so all of those things come up and everything's electronically stamped and, you know, date stamped and your ID number will get you in and out. So the next step is the administrator gets their self-assessment. Hopefully if this happens by the end of the school year, they'll have them for the beginning. They set up that pre-observation conference. In this model, you have to have the pre-observation conference for the first evaluation or the first observation. Just one. Now, the schools can choose to do more by their contract. Remember, local contracts will, or local policy will supersede. But McCrell says you only have to have one, because their theory is that's the only one that will be announced. So you're going to set up the pre-observation conference, and I suggest strongly that you have the observation piece first, meaning sit down with the teacher, you have the schedule for when you're going to go in to see them, and talk about what the lesson will be or what you expect to see. Because the bulk of that period, hopefully it's a full period, will be spent reviewing their self-assessment. And once you get into that and let them talk and explain and different areas of, you know, that they've been able to uh, really soar in, I think they're really going to like talking about it. That'll take the bulk of the period and you may not get to the observation. So do the observation piece first. Um, now, as an evaluator, I would... Look at, the, look at the rubric. Now, the rubric and the self-assessment are one and the same. It's the same instrument. I would look at it for that teacher, and I would have an idea where I think they are before they come in, because you want to have that collaborative feedback right from the start. So you want to sit down with them and, and either, you know, you're going to agree. There's 25 elements in the McCrell teacher evaluation model, 25. You may agree on 20 that, yes, we're dead on. We, we agree. That's exactly where I felt you are, too. And you may spend the bulk of your time talking about the five where you're kind of lower or higher than the teacher. But remember, self-assessment is not evaluative. They don't change it. You don't ask them to change it. You, it's a starting conversation. We have to start somewhere so that then we can measure the growth in both our eyes. So then the next step is, after that pre-conference, you set your observation. Obviously, you get in there and you do the observations. Every observation gets a post-observation, but only the first one has to have the pre-conference, okay? In that post-observation, you're going to do, you're going to observe whether it's a full or the 20 minuteers, whatever the district sets up for you. The post-observation conference, as soon as you send them the electronic version of your rubric that you completed on them, they will begin to upload artifacts. That's evidence or artifacts or anything they want to send you to say, this is what I'm doing in this area, I know you saw this, but I've done this, this, and this on the day before or the day after. You know and I know that when we evaluate our teachers, I was an administrator for 15 years going in, a lot of lessons are more than one day, they're more than one period. So we need information a lot of times. 
So those artifacts and that evidence are going to be valuable to where you really feel they fall on that rubric. They can send you things and upload under each of the standards, and I'll show you that. There's five standards, 25 elements. Under each one of those standards, they'll be able to upload artifacts for that standard, so you'll know what they're sent for. They're not in just one library. They'll be five. Okay, so anything they send you. Then you have your post-conference, and obviously the artifacts stop. You discuss where you feel um, the rubric for that teacher is in a completed version. Um, it is up to the people and the district in the room and the, where you're going to be with this um, model, whether you would change it based on the evidence or whether you would hold firm. That's more of a district decision. And I've been in quite a few districts for the last two years and uh, there's about an equal sentiment on that. Whereas if I send in a lot, I say that was great and the next time I come in, I'm gonna look for those things and obviously give you credit, or other people are saying, other districts, if I get great evidence and these artifacts are a no-brainer, I'm giving it to them on that evaluation. So I think that's something that a district decides. You really, really want to be consistent. You know, if one person's giving credit for everything sent in and someone else isn't, that's where things start to kind of fall apart. So consistency, whichever it is, is what's most important, I think. I think. And that we, um, when I go through the actual rubric a little and the scoring of it, I'll, I'll remember to go back to this, but I just want to mention it real quick. We want to give credit where credit's due. You have, to, you have to earn every one of those little indicators in a standard to get that categorical rating. But I may be a proficient teacher, but I may have done this one thing to the right which is accomplished or distinguished. Give that person credit even though they can't fill out all of the indicators because then you'll know and they'll realize that it's not something that I'm going to skip or not, you know, give them credit for. You just can't give them the categorical rating until they've done all the indicators under each of the standards. So we'll talk about that a little later. I just wanted to say that um, whether or not you're giving them credit, I would say on the rubric, you, you can check off things, even though it may not move them to the next rating, okay? We'll go over that. Um, Okay, and then you have your summary evaluation conference at the end of the year, teacher summary rating forms. Uh, the instruments will calculate all of your evaluations, your observations. What it will not do is, and this is my overview, we're going to go over these pieces. What it will not do is give an overall rating. That's still the administrative piece, okay? So each standard, if I evaluate you three times, if I come into your classroom three times, three observations, that summative form is going to have all these little check marks on it, okay? You're going to be able to look at it and then decide. Overall, in standard one, this teacher is developing, proficient, accomplished, or distinguished. But that's going to be the um, educational leader's decision. So McCrell's instrument will put them all on there for you. They just won't make that end evaluative decision, okay? Because they know that a lot of this goes, a lot more goes into this, okay? And it is collaborative and we're hoping that all of this feedback um, really gets us on the same page with our teachers. And then when you say a lot more else goes into that, isn't that when then it gets sort of gray and subjective? Or what well, else? No, what else I mean, I, very good question, thank yeah. you. When I say a lot more goes into it, here's what I want to say. Say a teacher in one of the standards was solidly proficient for two of the evaluations, two of the observations. And then, I don't know, something, you may know something personal happened, you happened to go in and it was just not a great observation. You decide, now under that standard, it might be standard two. Under standard two, they have two evaluations that say proficient, one that says developing. You decide where they spent more time, where they had the richer experience, that's what I mean. So when I say it goes into the, it's three, what are you gonna choose? Is it always the two to one? more check marks win, or is it the richer experience or the longer experience? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, what is the software that the crowd uses for their evaluation? CircSoft. CircSoft? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you, and it's a separate company. Uh, they're the only people they work with, ESORP and MedEx, now it's only CircSoft. 
um, each of the schools that have McCrell have a separate contract and they actually get a person from SearchSoft, a representative who they can call every day if they need to. And trust me, they will. They will call them every day if they need to because each district's so different. And most of the states that McCrell's been dealing with are based on the county systems. And then they came to New Jersey and they're like, what? You're all different in one county? How can I have like 40 schools and you all do something different? They, they really think we're crazy. Um, the search off people think so too, I think, because they're like, well, wait, I have three districts in that county and you all want something a little different. And we're like, yeah, because we're district based, we're not county based. You know, most of the places, Midwest, uh, very big in North Carolina, Maryland, a lot of the states are county based and uh, they just make county decisions for many schools, not here. That was something new for McCrell and Sarsoff. They're getting used to it. Um, and then the professional development plan is your last step. So you take, obviously, you're having that meeting where the seven bubble is, and then you're just deciding on the professional development based on that year with the rubrics, the growth, the feedback, the collaboration, all of that talking that's going on. And I can tell you that that's the number one bonus of this model, of all the models I'm sure, is that there's so much more talking. There's so much more um, connection between our teachers and our leaders now. They're really, any school that I go back into for a, a coaching session, I go back to where I trained. Um, I've been in Edison a lot, 17,000 kids. I go back after being up there for about 14 days, and that's the piece that everybody loves. You know, they all, it's a little different. Everybody's scared of the new evaluation system but they want to be asked or they want to talk about what they're doing. This is the whole teacher, not just the 42 minutes that I observe my teaching staff on. This is the whole teacher, beginning to end. So that's what I think is so unique and beneficial to this type of a rubric. So the professional development plans, what are you going to do for the next year based on what happened that year and the growth that happened or didn't happen? And we'll talk a little bit about how in the books I'll point out that if obviously, just like in the past, if someone were developing or even lower, which is not demonstrated, you, you as an evaluator would have to help them develop a professional plan. Anyone proficient or above would pretty much sit down and say, where would you, where do you want to grow? What would you like to work on? And then, but it's collaborative. It's both of you working together, okay?